the City College of New York. My name is Rifat Bari and I recently graduated from Brooklyn Tech. I chose this college the day I almost lost my dad. Let me explain. 10 years ago in 2011, my dad would take me twice a week from our apartment in the Bronx all the way to City College. Back then we were so poor we couldn't even afford public transport, bus or train, forget about a car. So we would walk by foot all 10 miles from our apartment to City College. But it was worth it because I got to sit in classes with one of the most famous physicists, Dr. Michio Kaku, as he taught astrophysics in Marshak Hall. And just across from that hall is where my dad used to work as a security guard. Even though he had five bachelor's degrees and two master's degrees, including one from NYU. But on Friday, I almost lost my dad. My dad is a physics teacher at Brooklyn Tech and a doctoral candidate at Columbia University. It takes only 10 words to say that sentence, but it took him 20 years to achieve that dream. It all started in 2004 when he passed his GED, all the way to 2017 when he quit his last security guard job to start a full-time position as a physics teacher at Brooklyn Tech. Whenever I feel unmotivated, all I have to think about is how many times he got rejected from every single Ivy League and how many times he got rejected from every single interview. I still remember many nights he didn't sleep just so he could work the night shifts at Clinton Manor as a security guard with five bachelor's degrees and two master's degrees, including one from NYU. But on Friday, this Friday, I almost lost my dad. Since the start of this pandemic, my dad has been working on his doctoral dissertation at Columbia while still teaching his physics classes at Brooklyn Tech. But the pandemic did something bad. As soon as the pandemic hit, his attendance, engagement, and participation in all of his physics classes dropped. Students were turning off their mics, turning off their cameras, not raising their hands anymore. My dad couldn't create a bond between the teacher and the student anymore. He couldn't create a community in the classroom. He couldn't inspire or plant a dream in every student to try to become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. He couldn't do that anymore. So one day, he had an idea to create one website for each physics lesson. So 180 websites for 180 school days of the year. Every website took 2,000 lines of handwritten code. And every website had five layers. A do now, a big idea, an escape room, a homework, and flip classroom videos. Many times I'd go to sleep at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., seeing him working on his websites, making the flip classroom videos, creating the simulations, typing the 2,000 lines of code required to engineer each one of these handmade websites. And then when I'd wake up at 6 or 7 a.m., I'd still see him working on the websites. And when I asked him, did you sleep? He said, no, I didn't sleep so I could finish the website so my students could have something to enjoy physics with so that I can engage all seven types of learners. He didn't sleep all night just so he could engage every single student in every single one of his classes at Brooklyn Tech. But finally, Finally, on Friday, it all took a toll on him. It was our last day at Brooklyn Tech, where I'm also a student. And we came home, my dad parked the car in front of our home, and he went straight for the bathroom. 
as he was washing his hands as he was washing his hands something happened blood stopped flowing to his brain his knees buckled his arms dropped and his body his entire body collapsed he hit the bathroom toilet his head hit the toilet and an ugly thug sound rang out in the entire house my mom started screaming she started screaming and I, I never heard those screams in my life before so I ran to the bathroom to see what was what was going on and I saw something that I will never forget for the rest of my life I saw my dad motionless, soundless, face down, his arms spread across the bathroom, his face bleeding as it was attached to the cement bathroom tiles. I started going crazy. I didn't know what to do. And and I and I grabbed the phone somehow having the the, the understanding that I had to call 911. So I called the ambulance and in two minutes four ambulance vans came and the doctors the emergency responders rushed out of the vans and they asked me where's your dad and I pointed them he's, he's right here he's in the he, he, he's right there and and the doctors came and they they attached it was the worst thing I saw in my life they attached so many knobs and devices and instruments to him it was it, it was and they were trying to wake him up trying to put water on his face, trying to see if he was conscious. They were moving their hands around his face, trying to see if, if, if he was alive, if he was awake, if he was conscious, if he was breathing. So after that, the emergency responders took my dad on the stretcher to Mount Sinai Hospital. And I also went on the ambulance van. And I sat by my dad for the whole night, for the whole morning, in Mount Sinai and those were some of the longest moments in my life as the doctors performed all sorts of operations on my dad they gave him CAT scans x-rays long heart scans short heart scans and finally after two heart scans four hours apart the doctors brought the news And my body was shaking as the doctor delivered the news. They ruled out traumatic brain injury, cardiac arrest, and heart attack. That was the greatest relief in all my life. They ruled it out. And I, I, it was like a second life for my dad because that day I almost lost my dad but thanks to some of the greatest doctors who worked relentlessly tirelessly to save my dad with all the operations my dad survived this would not have been possible in any other country with any other doctors so let me thank those doctors who worked tirelessly to save my dad's life because otherwise he wouldn't be here today. My dad is still struggling to speak, still struggling to eat because he lost all the teeth in, in the front of his mouth. Thank you for praying for my dad. It has been healing him. Please keep praying so we can be together again. Inside the sphere, you have to pretend that. Pretend that. And imagine that we have a small section of the balloon from where the light of the candle is coming out from. It's X. 30 seconds left. Or rather, half five times X. Multiply. That's right. So, base, you have that. Base, you 
You have Gram. How many Gram you do have? One. How to give me a little child with this guy's second child. So I'll, I'll put the box here. And let me put it down. Do you see the radius? I see R. Very nice, very nice. R for radius. And do you see the arc? Yeah, instead of arc, I see area. Alright, it is area. Okay, so you're gonna call it a Is that okay? Yeah. Because we are in three dimensions. Hey, it's Brian. That's it. I don't want to lose them, I mean. You don't lie. Oh, how many grams of carbon? Okay, you can come back and make more. 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So is it 10 grams? Yeah. Let's fall in love with math and science. Let's fall in love with math and science. Alright. Um, yeah, you can tell me how many triangles you can create from this 19 draw. Yeah. Alright, let's see uh, how many group we have here. Hello everybody. Okay, 19 to 3, minus 11 to 3, minus 9 to 3. 2 seconds. 2 seconds. Uh, let's do it quick. And I get 720. Okay. One over here, one over here. So, oh, so very good. Can you? This is called distribution. It's not gonna be too awful. It's not too awful. It's not too awful. It's not too awful anymore. Too much, too shy.